We have a heated Israel-Palestine debate to look over real quick between Mehdi Hassan and former Israeli spokesperson Elion Levy, where Mehdi not only brings the heat, but brings it early. I mean, the entire debate is just full of him with factual evidence providing why Israel's actions are not only unjustified, but war crimes and genocide, so much so that I may have to do two or three segments on this, but I want to start this one with some of the points that he brought out early in the beginning and then jump in with a little extra context. I don't understand how we're still debating this sitting in the comfort of New York, 7,000 miles away from a place that the UN Secretary General has called hell on earth. Justified? Justified? Was Israel justified in carrying out one of the most intense civilian punishment campaigns in history, according to Dr. Robert Pape at the University of Chicago, dropping 500-pound bombs, 1,000-pound bombs, 2,000-pound bombs on schools, hospitals, uh, universities, bookstores, libraries, mosques, churches, refugee camps, apartment buildings, cemeteries, cemeteries, destroying a higher percentage of buildings in northern Gaza than the Allies destroyed in Dresden during World War II, reducing Gaza to 42 million tons of rubble while they got people out of the way? How is that justified? Dropping a bomb, for example, on a six-story apartment building in central Gaza last October, killing more than 100 people inside, including more than 50 children, with no Hamas target in sight, according to Human Rights Watch. Debating if the Israeli response at this point, 11 months, 40,000 deaths later, feels kind of pointless with how obvious it constitutes war crimes at minimum and a full-blown genocide, in my opinion, right? After 40,000 Palestinians are killed, 16,000 children, after $300 million of dollars of damage specifically to cultural heritage, that being mosques, schools, church, uh, ancient artifacts, and it's cemeteries, as Mehdi says, and many of these attacks claiming to target Hamas only for reports to come out directly proving that there were none in sight, like the residential building that Mehdi alluded to or the Al-Shiva hospital. But how do we consider this justified if we consider Arabs to be humans? It can't be. The only people holding this belief that these actions are justified are people who justify that with the underlying belief that Palestinians are barbarian terrorists who just have a bloodlust and want to murder, which is inherently racist, especially when we're talking talking about predominantly women, children, and the elderly being killed. If you flip that sentiment around and you said, wow, look at Israel, Israel's actions. I think that Israelis inherently are these just barbarian people who want to murder at all costs and just savage beasts, right? That would be anti-Semitic. Rightfully so, it would be called anti-Semitic, right? But when you say it about Palestinians, people don't react the same way, even though Israel is now using that sentiment, this, this underlying Islamophobia that exists to justify the death toll, the 2,000 pound bombs being dropped in condensed city, more percent of the population in Gaza being killed in 11 months than killed in Iraq in multiple years, in Afghanistan in 20 years. We are far past discussing if this is justified. Was Israel justified in telling people to go to safe zones and then bombing them and killing them in those safe zones? According to NBC, there were seven <laughs> deadly airstrikes between January and April in areas that the Israeli military had specifically designated as safe zones, killing Palestinian civilians like Sabrine Sakani, who was 30 weeks pregnant at the time. She was killed in a safe zone in April. Her little baby, newborn baby, died less than a week later. Was that justified too, Elon? Was Israel justified in killing a record number of kids in Gaza, 16,000 children, turning Gaza into what the UN has called a graveyard for children, according to Save the Children, killing more kids in the first three weeks that were killed globally? in each of the past four years, killing little kids like six-year-old Hind Rajab and her 15-year-old sister Leanne, firing 335 bullets into the car they were in. 335 bullets, and then killing the two paramedics who went to try and rescue them. Was that justified too, Elon? Was Israel justified in killing a record number of aid workers in Gaza? Right, a record number, targeting, targeting again and again, systematically car by car, according to Chef Jose Andreas. Are they justified in relegating the Palestinian civilians to less than 245 calories a day, less than is in a single can of beans, 12% of the average daily calorie needed, packing them in spaces with one toilet for every 4,000 people, designating safe zones only for those to be targeted over seven times? Remember when Rafa was a safe zone and Joe Biden said that that would be the red line? Well, they crossed that red line and then did it six more times after that and there hasn't been a damn word said from our president. It. Gaza is truly his biggest failure, and a lot of it has to do is come down to his own anti-American racism, anti-Arab racism that plagues a lot of Americans, whether consciously or unconsciously. Again, 
inherently seeing Arabs as these savage beasts that just want to do terrorism and blah, blah, whatever the talking point is. I mean, is Israel justified in turning away aid trucks with food and needed supplies just because they have things like toenail clippers or crutches in them, refusing to let in anesthesia, pain medicines, and other basic necessities for doctors into Gaza, preventing simple procedures from being carried out, letting disease run rampant without allowing the cures to those diseases in, all while forcing innocent people out of their homes and destroying them so they have nothing to come back to with the refrain being well if you're lucky enough you got a warning if you're lucky enough you weren't detained without charge and then tortured and killed or sexually assaulted if you're not buried under the rubble that is right L let alone the lancet reporting that has come out that shows the actual toll when you include those probably lost under the rubble would be well north of a hundred thousand it's the problem with a lot of spokespersons of israel they want to talk in abstract i want to talk in specifics so if we talk about proportionality we talk about discrimination we talk about war crimes uh last october shortly after october 7th israeli forces struck a three-story residential building in gaza city they killed 15 members of the al dos family seven children according to amnesty international the survivors say no warnings elon told us there were warnings no warnings were given to evacuate amnesty found no evidence of any military targets in the area and Israel to this day has offered no explanation for that strike. So for the dead Aldous family members, Elon, can you tell us why they were killed? Mr. Hassan, the IDF does not owe you immediate answers and the fact that Amnesty speaks, <laughs> the fact Don't that Amnesty the speaks to local question. witnesses intimidated by Hamas does not mean that there was not a military target. But was there? The but was there? Because Israel has never said Mr. there was a Hassan, military target. Hamas booby-trapped 40% of Gaza's buildings. Notice the instant obfuscation here. They can never explain or justify themselves. No target was given here. This is pertinent because again, this man was the Israeli spokesperson at this time. At the time of the attack, Mehdi is talking about this man worked in the government, worked for Netanyahu, and was the guy to explain these things. He then came to this debate to explain- Wiping out the entire place. I find it interesting that Israel, hold on, hold on. I find it interesting that Israel was able to pinpoint kill Ismail Haniyeh in a house in a foreign country. But when it comes to Gaza, when it comes to the Gaza Strip, they had to wipe out the whole place. They had to reduce it to 42 million okay, tons of rubble. And one final point, yeah. I just got on factual points. Elon, they're not your neighbors, they're people you occupy, just to be clear. Yes, Hamas is terrorist. What does that make Israel when they've killed 30 times the people, done 100 times the damage? I mean, the IDF is an absolute terrorist faction. I'm sorry to tell you this, but getting Western money doesn't make you not a terrorist. It probably makes you more of a terrorist if we look throughout history. I'm just saying. When you're shooting children in the head, as two different doctors in Gaza have personally told me that they've seen, these interviews are available on my channel, what does that have to do with Hamas tunnels or Hamas booby traps? When you're systematically targeting civilians and their houses with their families and cars with children in them. What does that have to do with Hamas? When you're leveling residential buildings with as many as 100 civilians and no Hamas targets, allowing AI to target your drone strikes that has plenty of errors, willing to kill up to 50 civilians per Hamas operative. What does that have to do with Hamas? It doesn't. It has to do with destruction, with death on a mass level, with keeping their boots on the necks of these Palestinians and refusing them the sovereignty that they not only beg for at this point, but deserve. I find it interesting that Israel, hold on, hold on. I find it interesting that Israel was able to pinpoint kill Ismail Haniyeh in a house in a foreign country. But when it comes to Gaza, when it comes to the Gaza Strip, they had to wipe out the whole place. They had to reduce it to 42 million okay, tons of rubble. And one final point, yeah. I just got on factual points, Elon, they're not your neighbors, they're people you occupy, just to be clear. Occupy illegally at that in a way that constitutes apartheid, according to the ICJ, who has finally ruled in on this. These people are people that they have subjected into poverty, second class citizenship, a lack of the supplies and resources they need, an autonomy of state. They're hardly their neighbors looking for any reason to bring mass death and destruction upon them where October 7th gave them that justification and they haven't even thought to look back since, especially when Joe Biden in America is patting them on the back and telling them great job every step of the way. I mean, you could have said on October 8th, 2023, that the response was justified. And I would have said, I mean, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't go about bombing civilians, but I, I get it. There was a terrorist attack. You can't, however, in any way say this. After 60% of Gaza has been destroyed, over 1 million people have been displaced, 16,000 children are dead, and a total number of 40,000 deaths that, according to Lancet reporting, with those lost under rubble, with those unconfirmed, is probably closer to 180,000 deaths. 2% of the population, more than was killed in Iraq in the entirety of that conflict, more than was killed in Afghanistan in 10 years, or 20 years, I mean, sorry, more than's been killed in the entire Russia-Ukraine, pop the percents of population in the Russia-Ukraine co conflict, the entirety of its two years. You can't say this when all that has happened in just 11 short months uh, in September 2024.